Should we pan over and show our house right now? <laughs> yeah. We just basically just moved everything <laughs> to the side. Make it look pretty good because it's been a chaotic week. Yeah, and you have a booger. Oh, thanks. Dude, what if I had Corona? <laughs> well, I have it anyway. I won't done, touch my face. Yeah. Can you get Corona by having sex? You're breathing on it. I mean, the way we've been having sex. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll follow up from last week okay <laughs> welcome to today's episode of i get it thank you so much for being here and i wanted to pop in with this episode we've been talking about our marriage the last couple of weeks and and a lot of the positive parts that we've been working on and i really just want to talk today one to to everyone in case you ever find yourself in the situation but to the people who right now are feeling lost you haven't gotten to that next step yet maybe you've had a break of trust in your relationship or you're not connecting in the way that you want to and so today's episode is to give you hope and to show what can be on the other side and that we all struggle um, and what it can look like if you continue to choose to fight so yeah stay tuned stay tuned Welcome to I Get It, a podcast for the modern woman who doesn't want to live mediocre. We're balancing babies on our hips, typing out that important email, and flipping pancakes at the same time. Not to mention, keeping things steamy with our husbands right before we put our face mask on for the night. It's not easy, and you are not alone. I'm your host, Tara Wages, and I get it. Haley Taylor, hey, you're, uh, you're on the podcast right now. What would you like to say about marriage? Oh, man, don't, don't do it, man. <laughs> <laughs> that's what you always hear. That's, what, that is, that's good. Welcome to today's episode. Thank you so much for joining us. I am your host, Tara Wages, and this is my man who never stops moving. He literally answered a phone call three seconds ago <laughs> and has already been in how many meetings this morning you are you're just you're all kinds of a machine last week i said you're my sex machine i feel like <laughs> i'm just your machine <laughs> you are you are a literal machine just pushing put your machine to do whatever you need me <laughs> wes wages thank you so much wesley for being here thanks you're gonna start writing those intros in for me i know you haven't had to do it yet so no um, what happens when we're in a fight? I want to hear that one. Well, today we're kind of disconnected, you know? We are disconnected right now. And I was going to just say, it's nice to sit next to you. I agree. <laughs> it has been a long seven days in the Wages household. And today is Monday. This podcast is going live tomorrow. And I am just praying that our kids will leave us alone long enough to actually get it done. Because I have to be in a meeting and in one hour from now. So... It has just been insane. Last Sunday, Wes and I sat down to do our planners for the week last week. And I looked at him from across the table and was just so happy. I was like, I have great childcare this week. I had booked out our childcare. I had four solid days and we had a date night and we had RV renovation time. And two hours after that, we get a text message from our number one love, that she needed to be tested for the coronavirus because she was having just a few, you know, nasal congestion and things like that. Yep. And it's a week later. We're at eight days and she still has not gotten her results back. She feels totally fine um, at this point, but just we're still just safe. waiting on those results. And so our entire week this last week was just out the window. Mm -hmm. And um, we have not sat down and had a real conversation <laughs> until right now <laughs> until right now so welcome to our conversation <laughs> um we are glad that you're here and um yeah it's just been insane and like i said he just finished a meeting and then a call and now i'm leaving to go to a meeting so it's just starting right back up this week isn't any slower mm. than last um so we are still just riding this ride that everyone is on, um, how the coronavirus is just still affecting us, even though things at times feel normal. And then you have the fear that you have a symptom or someone you've been in contact with does, and it just 
knocks everything out from under you. And so it's just a the reminder. The whole reason we're wearing masks. Yeah. It's just like, you know what? It's to prevent me from spreading anything, prevent right. you from getting in anything. It's just like we still have to carry on with our lives, but at least we can do it as best we can. Yeah, but it's just, it is a reminder that like, Things are, the, the world has shifted. Mm -hmm. Things have changed dramatically. And so that is where we're at today. And um, yeah, we're just going to dive in, I guess. Let's do it. Start talking. So Wes, I know that you haven't Good. watched it yet, but one of the big things that happened this last week. How do you week, know I haven't watched it? Because we've talked about it. Oh. Um, let me just say to July came in hot. You know, like every month there's been this new big thing that's happened, you know, we're all just like, oh, what's going to happen next month? And the beginning of July, Kanye announced he wanted to run for president. Is he still running? I think so, but I haven't seen much about it. Yeah. There's the the Wayfair um, conspiracy talk that's just taken over the internet and Jada Smith and Will Smith's Red Table Talk, which this is a podcast that we focus mostly on marriage with, with a few other things mixed in. So that is where I'm going to spend. That's what I'm focusing on today. But holy moly, July came in hot. <laughs> There's The aliens haven't come in yet, thankfully. <laughs> okay, so this last week, Jada called herself to the table and that's what it's called like she brings people in and asks them really hard questions about a specific topic either in their life or going on in the world that's a little controversial uh -huh. and so it came out this guy came forward and was like hey i was in a relationship with jada several years ago and kind of just blasted her news all over the internet and so Will and Jada decided, okay, well, I guess we need to talk about it. You know, we weren't ever planning to talk about this, but since he's came forward, we might as well just clear the air. And so what Props I saw- Props to them for that. I agree. It's just like, I hey. totally agree. Yeah. Because what I had seen everybody posting about is why are they flashing their stuff online? You know, if this is so private or this awkward conversation with Will and Jada, that's what people were saying. And, and I'm just like- Man, I I watched it and I really enjoyed hearing them talk to each other about this really difficult season in their life. And it gave insight to what couples struggle with because she says that they were actually separated at the time. Yeah. And they were separated. She was struggling because she had not felt seen in a long time, which is so common for women. That is something mm -hmm. so many women relate to that as soon as you feel disconnected and unseen by your spouse you start emotionally like desperate for something else. And so this man stepped in and gave her that attention that her body, her, she was looking for. Mm. Um, and she was just in a very vulnerable position and not to excuse her behavior in, in any way. Right. Um, but yeah, people were just like super negative about it. And Will is interviewing her and there were moments that you could still hear that pain in his voice, that like hesitation and a little resentment. And I connected with that on a deep level of people were saying like, well, obviously therapy didn't work for them or obviously, you know, he's not over it. And I think that when you've come through such a hard time where you felt this extreme level of betrayal, like it's so easy to feel those emotions again, even if you've healed, you know, mm -hmm. like you talk about the day that your, your parent passed away or the day that you experienced this hard moment in your life, you can still feel that pain that you felt that day, but that doesn't mean it's keeping you from moving on with your daily life anymore. You know, yes. they were able to still come together as husband and wife and move forward in their relationship and love each other in a deep way. But that doesn't remove that when that topic comes up, he doesn't feel hurt. And I connected with that. And I felt, I felt seen in that moment and understood by somebody. And yeah, I just, I thought it was really interesting that people were so negative about the talk when I thought that it was so good. And also I'm like, well, gosh, I share my whole marriage with the world, you know? And, and the reason we do that is so other people feel seen, they feel connected. And, mm -hmm. and so they know that they're not alone. And so. Well, you know, you also saw the messages or what people were saying um, in the negative, right? But there's no telling how many messages they got that are positive right. that people just wanted to send. Yeah. Because I know that happens to you a lot 
Um, you know, we share a lot of things on here that people just don't want to talk openly about. And that's understandable, right? Yeah. But the amount of messages that you get and women you talk to is, is insurmountable. Insurmountable? <laughs> I don't know if that's a word. <laughs> is that a word? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Far surpasses <Yeah. laughs> um, the amount of like uh, messages you get are, that are public. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so I'm sure they had a lot of people and much deeper conversations that were saying, hey, thank you. And that's true. That is true. I just, it bothered me to see such negative messages over to people being vulnerable. Yeah. And it was really also cool to see them like being able to laugh about this hard topic. You know, they were kind of teasing each other in certain ways. And they, I could tell it was an inside joke at the end. They high five and they're like bad marriage for life. You know, mm. that I could tell it was like an inside thing. Like they're laughing as they're saying it to each other. And um, and that they've chosen each other, you know, and that's what I think is so beautiful. And so all growing up and, and early on, I just dreamed one day about having that relationship of being 85 years old and my kids and my grandkids just being like, they never struggled, you know, like they were the ideal relationship. They had the perfect marriage and that's what I wanted really bad. Um, and now I guess that that's not what I've experienced, you know, and, and I don't know what the future holds for us. Obviously we we've talked about that, mm -hmm. um, that there, we are not, we've realized that we're humans now yes, and that we are not above sin and that we are not above struggle or depression or anything like that. That's why we got to work on it, which is exactly why we have major boundaries. And we put so much effort into what we have a hundred percent. Um, but I now realize that, we we hear about other couples, you know, we know a few couples that have still, they're still together, but you hear the, yeah, he cheated on her a few years ago and she's still with him. Mm -hmm. You know, like there's that negative connotation to it. There's that like negative vibe now around this couple. And I see more beauty in those couples now than any other relationship. Like screw the pr Cinderella Prince Charming you know, scenario yeah. for me anymore. Like to see a couple that one of them screwed up, you know, or one of them betrayed them or they went through a season of depression and darkness and they came out the other side. That is a beauty to me that mm. you can't compare it to anything else. Um, because the, it's one thing to just have the feelings. I know that I love you. My heart tells me that I love you. And it's another thing to have to choose to love you. It's another thing to make that choice to be like, I'm hurting and I'm still going to be here, mm -hmm. you know? And I think that that is the power that comes with a really strong relationship. And it's and not to say that that's, um, that time should be quick or, you know, the healing time, you know what I mean? Yeah. Or anything. We just don't want to like say, Hey, you know, something happened like that. You, it's going to make your marriage so much stronger if you just work through that quickly, you know? Right. No, it took years for us. Right. It took me a solid two years. And even this... Specifically, we're speaking about pornography. For us, yes. <laughs> yeah, just so we, yeah, just but so we I, know Yeah, this applies to anything. Yeah, absolutely. You know, like, I can say now, though, that I see the beauty that has come from our struggle. And, and it's crazy because I can't even believe that I'm saying that. You know, I can remember that first counseling session that, that we went to and you called our counselor and had it set up and I did not want to go. And I remember looking at her and saying, I want to leave him. Like, I don't want to be with him anymore. And she looked at me and said, you have every right to feel that way. Like, I totally would understand if you left him, which I needed to hear that. I needed that validation. Yeah. And she said, but... I can tell you that I see something in y'all that the future of you is worth trying. You know, that I can see what potentially you could turn into. And so it gave me that hope. And so to know where I was in that moment of just like, I, I, my, I will never heal from this to knowing where we are in this moment, even in this moment where we're right, like right now, literally, we feel disconnected from each other compared to how we normally are. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm still so obsessed with what we have, you yeah. know, like even in this moment that's difficult, I couldn't imagine anything else. And so to know that I'm saying that today versus where I was laying in my bed in 2016 is insane. 
to me. And Mm -hmm. so I want to talk about this to give hope to that couple that either is going through that or will go through that one day. So you can come back to this moment that with that effort and with that work and with that untangling of each other, there is hope. But I can remember in those moments of just being desperate to hear from other people that were angry with their spouse. Like I can remember Googling and searching through forums to hear from women that were just as mad as I was, you know? Mm -hmm. And, And so I do, I plan to make a podcast in the future where I really dive into that anger and Mm -hmm. how I felt and unbreak that for that woman out there that needs to hear another woman be angry, you know, and I will always add uh, the hope at the end. I'll plan to be away for that week. You can. And that's totally fine. That is totally fine. But I was, I was desperate to hear from somebody that was broken and that was hurting. and, And I did not want the hope in that particular moment. And, or at least I wanted it at the end, you know, Mm -hmm. I wanted to hear that what I was feeling was normal. Yes. And so that is why I think it is so important for other couples and high profile couples like Will and Jada Smith, who people look up to so highly to come forward and say, listen, we aren't perfect. We have struggled and we've come out on the other side of that. You know, yeah, we're scarred. Yeah, we're bruised. And when you touch it, it hurts. But we have fought for each other in a way that you have, you can't understand yet because you haven't been there. And I love that. And so I wanted to share just really briefly on what we did in those moments and how, what got us through that night of my brokenness to our healing, you know? Um, And, and there are a few key things that we did that helped with that. And there are things that we did wrong as mm-hmm. well that I'll share. Um, and one of these things that comes to my mind first that was both good and bad um, is you gave me space to be angry. And our counselor gave me space to be angry. And for us in that moment, um, it, it was initially something that you had done. And so... I felt like I could be angry specifically at you. That's not going to apply to every relationship. You know, there are some relationships that it would just dealing with depression or something like that. Things need to be navigated differently, Mm -hmm. you know? Um, But because it was an act of betrayal for me that had gone on for an extended period of time, I was angry, you know, and you gave me that space. And, um, and I, that helped me so much because I needed to get that anger out of my body. My counselor gave me that space to get that anger out of my body. Um, but I did, I said some things during that time that I do regret saying, you know, that, that I should not have said there were some very, very intense, um, harsh words that were said. And so if I could go back I would talk about my anger and I would say like how I'm feeling, but also have boundaries in that. And and that's something that I do regret. Um, But you gave me the grace and that was really helpful. So one, that's probably the number one thing I say on this podcast is grace, 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 always. Um, So you giving me the grace to say exactly how I felt and let that be. That was super, super helpful. Um, The second thing that really got us from point A to point B is you started putting in my love language every single day. And we've talked about this. I'm words of affirmation. Wes is not words of affirmation. I literally wrote a script for him. Yeah. Yeah. And I said, this is exactly what I need to hear from you every single day. I need to hear from you that I choose you. Yeah, I still have it in my notes. I'm fighting for you. You are worth it. You're the only person that I want. Like, I need to hear these words every day. And it's okay that I needed to tell you what I needed to hear. It doesn't take that away at all um, because you still said those things. And whenever we weren't together, you learned uh, that you could do a video. And so you would video yourself speaking to me and you would send that to me. So you're still fueling my words, but not putting yourself on the spot of 
being uncomfortable and not knowing what to say and screwing up. So you don't want to say anything at all. Um, and you also wrote to me. I can remember I had post-it notes all over our room because you were just like writing post-it notes as you would think of them. And those things healed my heart. Mm. They made me feel seen. Because at that point, we had gone four years in our marriage of hurt, you know, two really, well, actually that's not true. We had gone two years at that initial moment because it was an extra two years of healing um, of just pain and not feeling seen. So there were months that you were pouring my love language in daily and you were getting nothing in return and you were gracious and you were patient and you stuck through that. Mm. And that got us to a point of me finally realizing, okay, we're in this, you know? And I will say that was super awkward for me to have this little script, you know, that I didn't really write these words. I didn't know that you needed to hear every day that I'm fighting for you. But if you, if that, that just because it doesn't mean anything to me, doesn't mean it doesn't mean anything to you. Do you know what I mean? And so by me reading that, it honestly just spurred conversation. And by doing it every day, I got more comfortable with it. And to now, you know, I could tell you that, you know, and it doesn't feel awkward at all. Yeah. Um, and just for the right, he wasn't literally reading every time. He just, no, no. He, he wrote I, it down so he wouldn't forget. What I yeah. Cause I, I just needed to know what you needed to hear. Yeah. You know, it's like, we're in a relationship. Nobody ever told me, oh, by the way, when you marry Tira, she needs to hear these things. Mm -hmm. Nobody told me that. She didn't tell me that until, you know, years down in our marriage. Well, I didn't know I needed to hear it until you broke my trust. Right. But those are the things that we learn as we get older, you know, yeah. and things will change. And it is okay when I tell you, hey, um, I need you to put your arm around me. Um, at church, I need you to like put your arm on my shoulder. I've told you that before. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it makes me feel like boom to the stars, like right there. Yeah. Um, and that's, and it's honestly completely fine. Like yeah. I'm totally fine that I told you to do that. Yeah. And when you do it, I don't feel like it's like not, you know, in your heart or anything. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. That is something because it goes back to, I have so much more respect now whenever you do give me those words of affirmation because I know it's not natural for you because I know it's intentional. And so when I know something is intentional, that makes me feel loved, you know? And so, yeah, it's not natural for me to put my arm around you at church, but you then know, Oh, she's thinking about me right now. This mm -hmm. is an intentional act where I think early in dating relationships were like, if he really loved me, he would just tell me that he fights for me every day, yeah. you know, which is just total BS. Well, in reality, it's like, if he really loved me, I would tell him how I receive love and then he would do that. <laughs> yeah. But just knowing that something's not natural for someone and they choose to do it anyway. That's yeah. what this whole podcast episode is about is when we're making that choice for each other, when we're choosing each other and it's not just some daily go through the motions thing that means more than going through the motions, yeah. you know, um, because we were thought of and that is all we really want. I desperately want to be seen mm -hmm. by West wages. And I know that he desperately wants to be seen by me. And you may not have those thoughts immediately in the forefront of your head because you don't have the language for it yet. But I guarantee you the second your spouse stops seeing you, you will realize all you want is to be seen by them. Mm. And so when he does these things for me, I know he sees me because it's intentional and it's not natural. Yeah. And I love that. So that is something that helped us get to that next step. You know, another thing that helped us was we found the things that we fell in love with each other over again. And I can remember our counselor like giving us this assignment of just like, think about when you met, think about whenever you first got together, what were some of those things that brought you together? And um, so I saw Wes Wages for the very first time at the bowling alley and he was standing across the room wearing an orange polo. And I swear to you in that moment, I knew that I was marrying him. I was in a relationship at the time and God literally flipped a switch in my heart and I knew Wes Wages was my husband. It was no other way to describe it. And so I can remember early on in our counseling, we had a date night and I was like, okay, 
verbally, I'm telling him that I don't want to be with him. You know, I was still verbally beating, bringing you through a gutter, you know. So, but I want to show him that I'm still showing up. And so I was driving, which I never do. And I drove us to the bowling alley. And I can remember us bowling together that night. And that to me was my sign to you Mm -hmm. that I see you and that I'm here and that I'm showing up and I'm going to do this work with you, you know? Um, And that brought us together. And bowling is my love language as well. (laughs) Just kidding. (laughs) And, but we had a group that we laughed Absolutely. that night for the yeah. first time. And I don't know how long. And it's and really so, good to bring it back to like just the beginning, you know? Yeah. And so whenever we are experiencing these disconnects or we're experiencing these struggles to think about these things that brought us together, whether that's music, dancing to certain songs in our kitchen, whether it's what I walked down the aisle to or our song, you know, that we had our first dance with, um, Things that we listen to in the car together, you know, picking wildflowers uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> by Keith Anderson. <laughs> that was the summer Wes and I dated. Like that takes me back to us laying under the stars camping, you know, and there are certain things that we have in each of our relationships that, that make our relationship unique. So bringing those to the surface as a way of connection is beautiful. You know, hiking, there's just all kinds of things. Mm-hmm. And that helped with our healing process a lot. Um, and then lastly, time, you know, which that's the hardest part um, is just allowing that time. And even like I said earlier, that now we are, gosh, coming up on four years later, you know, and, and I'm still saying like, I finally trust you at a hundred. I trust you at a hundred, but I'm scared to trust you at a hundred. Um, it just shows that time does heal, but it still takes more you know, and, um, that you can get to the other side with, I hope that you hear all of the effort that we put into it. Yeah. It did not come on its own. And it's crazy even to think of what we've gone through in the last four years, you know, shortly after that West broke his leg, which knocked him off of his feet. That was a very difficult season for us. Um, of having to go through depression again. We've had financial stuff. We've had a sick child since then. We've gone through a lot of life in those last four years, but having these basic steps of putting in this effort and putting in this time, that is what has healed us to the point where now we are finally emotionally connected where we are having rocking sex for the first time in our marriage, like bomb time explosions happening in the bedroom consistently for the first time in our marriage. That was the 4th of July, (laughs) but you know, (laughs) And so that, we talk about sex, we talk about all of these other things, but these things didn't just happen. Right. They didn't just evolve. It took effort and it took intentionality in our relationship. And so when you hear us talking about these other topics, don't just sit back and think, oh, I wish I have that, or I will never have that, or what do I do to get there? And and I will tell you, effort, intention, love language, pouring in, healing trauma, talking about the hard stuff and digging the the parts of you that you've hidden for years with the help of a counselor. Mm-hmm. And so I, I don't want y'all to look at us and think that we just have it, you know, because we are still two humans that still argue and we still fight. And um, we still experience those small disconnects, but we are still working and striving to be better. Yeah, and, and we hope that y'all are along that journey with us and we want to help you experience the same truly yep. um, we're but, doing uncomfortable things still to this day that mean a lot for the other person for know? sure but i think that this is so important for both partners to listen to because it takes both of you mm-hmm. we could not be where we are today if i did not show up and and i'm so glad that i chose to you are 1000 percent worth it all the time even though you drive me insane ditto you drive me crazy <laughs> So thank y'all so much for being here. We love this experience of sharing life with you. And um, if you need anything or have any questions, thoughts, I'm here. I'm an open book, obviously. You can send me a message at Tierra Wages on Instagram. I would love to connect. And if you have enjoyed this episode or any other episode, please leave me a review. Every week I've had these goals of, that I'm trying to meet each week. And I'm now 17 away from 100. 
And I'm just dying to get to 100. I think I left your review. You did? Yeah. So if you're going to read my review this week on the podcast. No, I'm not. I am going to read a review, though. This review today is from Hannah N. 123. Thank you, Hannah. Listening to Tears podcast is as life giving as sitting down for a four hour coffee date with your best friend. She is not afraid to call you out on your crap, wallow in the feelings, challenge you to do better and be your biggest cheerleader. Her podcast is like a free therapy session with a guaranteed laugh along the way. She's open, honest, real, and so stinking fun. Seriously, if you're not listening, you're missing out. Hannah, thank you so much for being here. I'm genuinely, truly grateful. We both are. Yep. And um, Yeah, this is awesome because it's like words of affirmation for you. I know. I <laughs> so, know. <laughs> thank you guys so much for helping me out. <laughs> and I'm just like patting you Your over love here. tank's like filling up, you know what I mean? And I'm just like... Hey, dude, I love you. I'm proud of you. And it like works because you've had your love tank is just full. It's true. It's true. Thank you. Um, yeah. So thank you all again for being here and for those filling up my love tank moments. Um, I know that life is a little crazy and sometimes you feel a little crazy, especially when you feel like what you have isn't as good as what someone else does, but you are not alone. I get it. Be happy and love each other. Be happy and love each other. Peace.